Let me ask uh, the old Russian overly philosophical question about death. <laughs> so yeah. we're talking about the expanding universe. Sure. How do you think human civilization will come to an end if we avoid the uh, the near term issues we're having? Uh, will it be our sun burning out? Will it be comets? Oh, okay. Will it be uh, what is it? Yeah. Or, do you think we we have a shot at reaching the the heat death of the universe? Yeah. So we're we're <laughs> gonna leave out the anthropogenic. Uh, nuclear causes wars. of our potential destruction, yes, which I actually think are greater than the celestial uh, causes. So, um, so if we get lucky, yeah, if we get and, lucky, and intelligent, I yeah, don't know. yeah. So, no way will we as humans reach the heat death of the universe. I mean, it's conceivable that uh, machines, which I think will be our evolutionary descendants might reach that, although even they will have less and less energy with which to work as time progresses, because eventually even the lowest mass stars burn out, although it takes them trillions of years to do so. Um, so the point is, is that certainly on Earth, uh, there are other celestial threats, existential threats, comets, exploding stars, the sun burning out. So we will definitely need to move away from our solar system to other solar systems. And then, you know, the question is, can they keep on propagating to other planetary systems sufficiently long? Um, in our own solar system, the sun burning out is, is not the, the immediate existential threat. Um, that'll happen in about, you know, 5 billion years when it becomes a red giant. Although I should hasten to add that Within the next one or two billion years, the sun will have brightened enough that unless there are uh, compensatory atmospheric changes, the oceans will will evaporate away. You know, and and you need much less carbon dioxide for the temperatures to be maintained roughly at their present temperature, and plants wouldn't like that very much. So you can't lower the carbon dioxide content too much. So, so within one or two billion years, probably the oceans will evaporate away. Yeah. But on a sooner time scale than that, I would say an asteroid collision leading to a potential mass extinction, or at least an extinction of complex beings such as ourselves that require quite special conditions, unlike cockroaches and amoebas, you know, to survive. Um, you know, one of these civilization changing asteroids is only one kilometer or so in diameter and bigger. And a true mass extinction event is 10 kilometers or larger. Now it's true that we can find and track the orbits of asteroids that might be headed toward earth. And if we find them 50 or hundred years before they impact us, then clever applied physicists and engineers can figure out ways to deflect them. But at some point, you know, some comet will come in from the deep freeze of the solar system, and there we have very little warning, months to a, to a year. What's and, the deep freeze, sorry? To oh, the deep freeze is sort of out beyond Neptune. There's this thing called the Kuiper Belt, mm -hmm. and it consists of a bunch of, uh, you know, dirty ice balls or icy dirt balls. It's the source of the comets that occasionally come close to the sun. And then there's a even bigger area called the scattered disk, which is sort of a big donut surrounding the solar system way out there from which other comets come. And then there's the Oort cloud, W-O-O-R-T, after uh, Jan Oort, a Dutch astrophysicist. And it's the better part of a light year away from the sun, so a good fraction of the distance to the nearest star. But that's like a trillion or 10 trillion comet-like objects that occasionally get disturbed by a passing star or whatever, and most of them go flying out of the solar system, but some go toward the sun and they, they come in with little warning. You know, by the time we can see them, they're only a year or two away from us. And moreover, not only is it hard to determine their trajectories sufficiently accurately to know whether they'll hit a tiny thing like Earth, but outgassing from the comet of um, gases, you know, when the ices sublimate, mm -hmm. that outgassing 
can change the trajectory just because of conservation of momentum, right? It's the rocket effect. Gases go out in one direction, the object moves in the other direction. And so since we can't predict how much outgassing there will be and in exactly what direction, because these things are tumbling and rotating and stuff, it's hard to predict the trajectory with sufficient accuracy to know that it will hit. And you certainly don't want to deflect a comet that would have missed, but you <laughs> thought it was going to hit and end up having it hit. That would be like the ultimate Charlie Brown, you know, goat instead of trying to be the hero, right? He ended up being the goat. 